So what are the adrenal glands? They're two little wee glands the size of chestnuts that sit on top of each one of the kidneys. They have blood supply and they are directly responsive to centers in the brain. They produce, in general, cortisol and DHEA, plus adrenaline and a bunch of other things. But we're really interested in the cortisol and the DHEA. It turns out the pioneer on stress in the body was a Canadian, a guy called Hans Sale, and he coined the term adaptation, general adaptation response. He did all sorts of experiments on rats, putting them in stressful situations, and then euthanizing them and cutting them open, and he found the more he stressed rats, the bigger their adrenals got. And that's where the whole idea of this came from. And adrenal control starts in the brain. The brain has a center that produces ACTH in response to stress. And remember, stress can be external or stress can be internal. Psychologic stress for any number of reasons can increase ACTH, which increases cortisol production. And cortisol and DHEA are the prime products of this in stress. So initially when our adrenals are healthy and we get stress, the adrenals produce lots of cortisol and DHEA, both of them. Because again, they're the balance of the two. And in fact, normally much more DHEA is produced but that extra DHEA is important to balance out the catabolic effects of cortisol. So yes, the body will break itself down temporarily, but it also has the mechanism to build itself back up because it recognizes that metabolism, which is based on muscle mass, is critical for health. So we need the DHEA for proper metabolism of these nutrients, to prevent inflammation, to modulate thyroid function, and increase resistance to stress. And in health removal of the stressors, all our hormones go back to normal, and the body repairs whatever damage it was done. The problem is, we don't live in the caveman days where the stresses are few and far between. Instead, the stresses are always there, and some of us feel those stresses more than others. So increased stress leads to increased cortisol. As we said already, the main purposes of it is elevate blood glucose, break down muscles, and temporarily cortisol reduces immune function. Because remember, you're in a situation that's critical for survival. Who cares whether you can fight a cold or cancer or anything else, it's survival of the organism at that time. But if you equate that stress over a long period of time, you see a reduction in immune function. So we just break the muscle down. It's great for short-term uh, survival, but poor in modern times.